Good morning, Shriya. Hope you're doing good. Hi, Hari Leela. How are you? It's a good time for you to work on your reading skills. Make the best use. Hi, Samanvita. Good that you could uh, ensure that you're logged in. I, will, I guess you missed one of the first classes. Hi, Devansh. Good morning. That's okay. If this is your first class, no problem. Um, we had the sessions starting from like, uh, I think we had last week was the first week that we started the classes. And uh, I'm sure you'll have it available online. Uh, I think it's under the portal e-lectures. So that should not be a problem. Okay. Sampath, are all new students familiar with discussion board, read mark, e-lectures and uh, e-exams, e-books? Okay, good. Good morning, Naina. How are you doing? Vivek, are you reading any new books?
मॉर्निंग अनन्या मॉर्निंग आकर्षिता हाय मिहिरा हाय विवेक खुशी दैट्स नाइस नेम हाय वेंकट होप यू आर रीडिंग David Ashish Pradhan. Uh, what do you want to, us to call you, Ashish or David? Anshika. Hi, Anshika. Tarak. David. Okay. Hi, David. Hello everyone. A very good morning to all of you. I hope my voice is clear to you. And uh, we have the PPT and PDF shared. PPT will be uh, shared during the class, and PDF is something that will be mailed to you. Usually, PDF will be made something like thirty minutes or so before the beginning of the class. Okay. So this is our first class in English, and. Uh, um i hope uh, you are familiar with the online technology and uh, this is the second week and last week uh, i think it was padma ma'am's class and uh, all these classes will be available also in online however i uh, want you guys to sign up in the morning so i can say good morning to all of you uh, and uh, one more thing is yeah, if you have any uh, doubts you can right away ask that helps us to be more interactive in case you have any doubts you are not able to follow something you can definitely uh, look into the online video again okay so since this is our first class and our friends are joining um usually the class timing is 9 to 11 that's the duration we are up uh, online by 8:45 that's a little 15 minute uh, advance reporting time just to ensure that we are on with things in fine place and if you guys have any questions also you can pose that i will be available a few minutes even after 11 i can extend the class once if need be by a few minutes so i'll be doing that in case you guys have any questions that you uh, want to pose and you want to talk theek okay? hai uh so to all the new students my name is sarisha and uh, i am a verbal and uh, reasoning faculty uh located uh, my prime location is gandwal actually however i do handle uh, classes online and also for all the centers of kukatpally and other branches my profile and other details about other language faculties or english faculties uh, we i will share it to you towards the end of this lecture i mean towards the last part of the ppt one uh, quick confirmation is my voice uh, voice uh, clear guys sampath and uh, mehra and all that's good uh, if you find me fast or if you find me uh, unclear please do mention or especially when i'm explaining something if you feel something is fast you can feel free to explain that or uh, mention it here so that i can slow down and repeat okay so until we get used to each other's pace or uh, that's something that we could help each other rules of my class simple um, if you have any doubts you can happily Uh, post it in the class conversation page and um, if i if it is something uh, in line with the discussion that's happening in the lecture and if i could explain right there i'll definitely explain it 
but if it turns out to be something general and if i prefer to keep it uh, to the end of the class then i'll stop it uh, please don't mind and i don't want you to feel bad about it however in case i miss anything feel free to ask again towards the end okay because i usually close my lecture asking with um, the simple question of any more doubts so just in case if i miss anything on the chat box you can feel free to ask the question again okay that's it so we'll have the ppt pdf and the whiteboard where i can scribble a little and um, and i want each one of you to have a notebook and pen with you so that you can take any other additional notes also because uh, language classes and other classes you will have some extra points which are beyond the uh, content that is there i'm sure some of you are probably able to print out your worksheet but some of you probably might have it on your uh, screen simultaneously solving uh, so in that case also you can happily note the question and uh, the relevant extra information wherever you have okay there's one suggestion that i always give to your uh, give to my students these worksheets that are there for you i usually in the class i suggest students to make the answer key uh, like mark the answer key in the footer part of the worksheet so that you can redo these exercises multiple times uh, we uh, we uh, i have my batch of students like from 2015 17 i always suggest them to do at least twice so that you'll have good amount of revision and if you scribble right there in the question part of it there's no revision part of it it's actually you'll have the answer mark and it doesn't help us much okay Uh, in today's lecture, we are going to talk about CLAT and other law entrance exams, and especially the English part of it. What we've decided is we will give you insight uh, into the section of English language across the exams, and primary focus will be uh, CLAT, and also the tips that will help you to improve your skills eventually. Okay, and we'll later have a detailed session, obviously, on each of the topics. So this is more like an overview of it. in this lecture along with the class we have a worksheet where i have questions from the previous papers so i made sure that i pick the easy one so that you are not daunted uh, but if you find any questions difficult don't worry this is just the beginning this is your first class or second class more more importantly so that's okay we are going to write somewhere in 2021 we have good amount of time just take this class as an estimation of your current level that's it and you can identify the skills that you need to work on and go ahead and proceed with it am i clear guys okay let's get to the english section for the class and today's uh, uh, overview we will uh, talk about the english language where we'll understand the language section and we'll understand what about elp english sections because english as a language for clat might aim at passages i'm sure all of you are familiar with the latest pattern change and some of you we've been talking since november as and when we started getting information now but december jan uh, each time we have a sample paper we give an analysis and there was a video interview shared uh, which was done by naresa along with sampat and in case if new students haven't looked at it you can take a look at that also that answers a lot of questions too uh so uh, the exam in general and uh, alp english sections what we are going to focus in our sections that's something that we'll discuss and of course the preparation tips each one of you uh, might have a different level in english somebody might be very good in communication to speak very good english but maybe your spelling is pathetic i do have some students like that uh, some students are very good at writing but they hardly speak uh each one some are very hard working uh, but they have a little bit of phobia of english so each one is of a different type so for us we need to estimate our current standard and uh, work towards 2020 2021 clat where we aim for good results and towards and i'll introduce you to the names of all the faculty uh, who are currently with us with english language whom you might see in the different classes and all that okay so english language as such what do we have it a broad division of english language will be vocabulary grammar reading comprehension and para jumbles i hope each of these words don't need any explanation vocabulary means nothing but words grammar i'm sure you are familiar with grammar since high school reading comprehension is nothing but passages 
and many of you are uh, used to passages. I mean, I've seen in 10th board and I've seen in inter board, CBSE students also have good amount of reading comprehension and you have a lot of novel reading also that's part of your curriculum. And uh, it's nothing but passages and questions relevant to the passage. Parajambles is nothing but jumbled sentences where you have individual sentences jumbled up and you need to rearrange it in a different format. That's what it is all about. Uh, that's simple. Only four areas to look into, right? However, each of this area can be uh, uh, broadly divided into multiple subsections also. So that's where the question type concept comes into picture. Okay. Each of these uh, things can be solved in a different question type and uh, the way the question is asked is different. Sometimes it might look lengthy, sometimes it look, might look uh, time consuming, sometimes it might look confusing. That's how they try to do it. But background of it, this is a simple skeleton of English language. That's it. Nothing has changed since 2008 uh, when CLAT started and uh, of course compared to the previous years when NLUs had their own individual papers also, I hardly see any big changes in English because they are either passage oriented or reasoning oriented or one area or the other. So the fundamental structure is similar. So before I proceed on to what's there uh, and what's going to come up and what was seen earlier, this is a a brief uh, breakup of um, CLAT question distribution. I'll give you 30 seconds to take a glance at the uh, slide. You don't need to copy it. No worries. That's fine. You just take a look at the questions and then I'll explain how things have changed. If you're done, you can put done in the chat box. That tells me that your speed is in control. Okay, good. So yeah, uh, parajambles. Thank you guys. I got it. So let me explain. So I have a uh, 2008 to 2019 broad description. I have just put asterisk here to indicate these question types have come up in one year or the other. And uh, I didn't want to go more in detail in those areas. Uh, if you want, we can do that analysis later part of it. It doesn't impact so much. So parajambles is a question type that we have seen once uh, in 2019 it seems and earlier to that also I believe there was parajumble for sure. That's why we have uh, practiced that area in our classes regularly. Passage was an integral part of the curriculum and 10 questions was a standard uh, thing. Here in between we had 2017 was a little different paper actually. 2015-17 batch always had nice surprises that year. Uh, this was something like a cat level of passage that they have seen. Some of the questions were also like cat and even in 2015 we had some uh, things like that. I'll answer that question, Sivatmika. So, uh, 2016, uh, we had a passage. 2015, 14 marks was a passage. There was a paper, 2011. Uh, that was like complete passages. Four passages, four times of 40 uh, questions were there. And I'm sure I, I, many times I spoke to students in my classes already that just be prepared if your entire paper turns out to be passage oriented. That was a repeated dialogue that I used to say that because surprises are possible and we need to equip ourselves in all possible manners. So grammar, grammar was like fill in the blank sometimes. Grammar was sometimes like error correction, underlined sentence, incorrect ones, correct ones. So the formats were different but it, it was all around the areas like articles, uh, error tenses, subject verb agreement, right usage of the word, right conjunction, uh, all those concepts were tested. Vocab base, now vocab, foreign words, idioms, all these three uh, I would categorize under the English uh, vocabulary section itself. The vocab based uh, is still something that you can uh, say a sentence completion, which is nothing but fill in the blank kind of question comes under vocabulary. Analogies we haven't seen in CLAT, at least to my knowledge and my memory, uh, but that also come under the category of uh, vocabulary. Spellings, that's something that's a part of vocabulary. We used to have like five spellings, five meanings, 
five idioms, five foreign words. So there were years like that where specifically five, five, five questions were asked. So that was there. Idioms were also there. Sometimes idioms were in on context basis. Like instead of having a single idiom, they used to give us idioms in a in the format of a sentence, and they asked us what is the meaning of the idiom. And uh, sometimes uh, they may give uh, an incorrect idiom and they might ask you for the right idiom that you need in that particular place. So uh, the variation of the question uh, could be there, but background is simple. It's idiom based questions. Okay. There's this word called closed test. You might hear that word uh, as part of our lectures also in our session plan and all that. Don't worry. That's nothing but sentence completion. Instead of one or two blanks, it's a paragraph with multiple blanks. That's what is called closed test actually. It's simple. That's it. It's fill in the blanks, but multiple blanks. That's what we call it as a closed test. Again, closed test was a pattern that was uh, initially in CAT MBA entrance exams that we have seen, but uh, later it was introduced into CLAT also. And um, sometimes uh, you have uh, one of the years, I think it was 2018. Um, there was uh, like commonly confusing words is a question type that we've seen since 2015, I guess. And in 2018, they introduced commonly confusing words in the form of, of a paragraph. In a paragraph, they have like missing words and uh, commonly confusing words and they asked us to uh, choose the right one. So as I said, the look and feel might change, but the background of the question is similar. Okay, so these are the standard question types that we have seen over the years. Uh, in case you can't hear me, you can just do a refresh. Okay. So this is what is uh, CLAT 2020. Okay. Okay. Uh, one minute, guys. Aline, this is Elena. This is your first class. I understand. I will ask somebody to coordinate you. Okay. So the back end team should be simultaneously working on this. Okay, guys. Refresh is the first medicine, and if everybody is having the same issue, then I'll do it from my side. But for my class, the back end team is checking on me. So definitely they will also be listening to the classes along with me. Okay. Uh, so I'll continue with my class, guys, uh, while our friend uh, takes a little time. So this is what is uh, CLAT 2020. And Shuratmika, here I will answer your question. So guys, you have seen uh, uh, the passage breakup or the English section breakup in the last slide where we have questions over the many years. And you've seen the questions were like vocabulary, grammar, uh, parajambles, and reading comprehension, the broad uh, variations. This year was interesting since, um, uh, since November, December, uh, since the first news came out about the entire exam turning out to be passage oriented. And we had some of you probably not sure how many variations of information has come. Initially, there was no clarity on the number of questions and finally we freezed upon 150 questions because we believed uh, 150 is going to be the right number and we started doing mocks on that line. And uh, that's what happened with the CLAT also. They freezed on 150 questions and uh, to us. They did say that they want to go everything in the passage based uh, format. And um, so obviously passage means English. Reading comprehension is what we are supposed to expect. And that's what we had. And however, we were pretty clear that uh, they might uh, include a part of grammar and a part of uh, uh, vocabulary also as part of the curriculum. Like for your seniors, we've been doing classes uh, from long time. And before the second sample paper came, okay, we actually had some worksheets where there was a little grammar in English RC. First or second class, I tried to introduce that concept because uh, uh, we, we had that variation in one of the years over the last five, six years where they tried to include a grammar question like the fill in the blank in the bar, in um, reading comprehension. So we were expecting that format. But however, uh, this was a discussion uh, that I had with Padma Ma'am if I should put this word grammar here or not. Uh, the reason being is when uh, the initial uh, sample paper was given or initial idea was given about the uh, uh, syllabus pattern and all, we uh, didn't have a thing on grammar actually. 
but somewhere back on the of the mind at research team and product team we were confident that eventually it might come and we should be definitely prepared and uh, when we saw the second and third sample paper they started giving questions related to grammar and uh, uh, grammar in the format of uh, prepositions grammar in the format of error corrections also so that was something that as expected for, for us so it was not a puzzle to us uh, meanings of obviously meanings uh, were asked contextual meanings is a pretty common thing uh, and uh, that's very integral to the very much common to the clat and uh, actually uh, even symbiosis is another exam that does testing on meanings part of it so uh, so this is the broad overview of our uh, clat 2020 passages of about 450 words each is uh, uh, something that you can ex expect and these passages are from areas of contemporary historically significant fiction and non fiction writing now 450 words is uh, the expected size so we've seen the size variations from 430 to 450 plus uh, 460 something like that so around those lines you don't need to count the words in the exam hall it's okay plus or minus is what you'll have so uh, the reason this 450 word matters because of the time it may consume because the average reading speed is expected to be around uh, 250 right around 250 is going to be average reading speed and you should aim for at least uh, 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 300 words per minute so 450 words and uh, you have around uh, five questions approximately and there were some latest patterns where the number of questions actually went up to seven or eight questions on a single uh, passage so number of questions in on a single passage varies, varies from five to seven or five to eight and within that it could be a uh, grammar vocabulary or passage oriented uh, questions coming to the areas uh, contemporary could be uh, newspaper articles we've seen articles coming up from popular newspapers uh, like the hindu the wire the guardian uh, and economic times these are some newspapers that i've seen i haven't seen Deccan chronicle or uh, not sure if times was there i don't remember but economic times guardian and the hindu were something that i've seen and at least I remember those. So this is a good, good opportunity for you to read not just Indian newspaper, you can read international newspaper also, also like the Atlantic Times, the New York Times, Time Magazine is also available online. You could read that and uh, this will help us to know how the world is, right? You can uh, have a look at the international news also and since that news is not it takes a little time to read and understand so your actual reading speed is tested there so just keep reading the contemporary articles you may have things related to non-fiction fiction which could be autobiographies descriptive stories short stories and uh, uh, content from some novels science articles anything like that is possible and you might take around five to seven months and that's where the biggest uh, uh, thing is going to come into play your reading speed if your reading speed is good and if you are able to comprehend questions quickly you are going to uh, do it well in otherwise you might take more time to solve the given question it is not your knowledge that is quite, uh, tested here actually uh, Yes, knowledge is something that you will gain with a lot of practice in the mock exams and when you learn the concepts, but it is your time and speed that is definitely going to be tested. Uh, okay, sure. Uh, so that's what it is. I'll summarize once again, okay, at the end of the slide. Uh, the question types are main idea, summary questions, inference questions, meanings of the words, phrases, and grammar. Main ideas like what is a uh, main uh, central thing that is talked about in this passage. What is the author trying to convey? Summary of the passage is like complete just from beginning to end. Partial inf information will be incorrect. Inference is where you have to read between the lines, something which is not evident, but you have to understand uh, between the lines. Meanings are contextual and uh, idioms and phrases is something that you can uh, expect and grammar in the format of prepositions and all. One of your friends, Shivatmeka, I think, she asked me a question, uh, can we expect foreign words and all? Uh, let's say this, can we expect vocabulary? Yes. When we expected vocabulary and when the word can be a simple English word, why can't it be a foreign word? 
that's a simple thing that i can say if there's an article where they have some foreign word why can't it be there recently i came across an article where they were talking about corona virus and there is some terminology related to medical and uh, foreign word i don't exactly remember to that but yes if they talk you can have it too so there it's a vocabulary and a foreign word combination so your familiarity with the word will help you a little even if you don't know the word you still have the contextual vocabulary rules that we will learn in our uh, class curriculum that will also help you right so the word knowledge whether it is asked or not vocabulary is going to increase your speed so comfort with language will helps you will help you to do the question in a much quicker manner i did have instances where students had difficulty in interpreting the question even pretty recently there was a question where students were saying that they have a different answer but when i actually broke the question into parts and tried to rephrase the question that's when they understood oh yeah right uh, they actually marked an entirely opposite answer to what it was asked so that's what it is about uh, vocabulary so i hope idioms also can be as as part of the vocabulary uh, questions as a contextual thing i hope that answers your uh, questions shivatmika i want you guys to be prepared for everything they are the people to set the question paper but we have to be equipped with all possible ammunition we cannot leave it anything like that so the number of questions in english language were like 28 to 32 guys which was roughly 24% of the paper now ranjit asked me about the question uh, sorry newspapers so i'm just repeating the newspapers once again before i proceed to the new uh, latest uh, next slide so the ranjit the newspapers in, in in india i like the hindu ranjit i like hindu because i've been studying it from my high school days and i really love the way the content is uh, uh, given and the vocabulary is definitely good as against many other newspapers at least and uh, Uh, especially if you want to increase uh, reading speed you can start with the main newspaper the first page if you want to uh, increase your vocabulary and comprehension skills you have to go inside into the columns and sunday special articles and all that and uh, that's something that you could look into and uh, the other one is the economic times i like economic times especially because of the business world business is an important news area because i remember it was probably somewhere around uh, uh, 2012 or 13 there was a question on um, post data check in the gk part of it what do you mean by post data check students were confused they did not understand what a post data check was i'm sure all of you are familiar today because nowadays this word is a lot common post data checks uh, so some terminology related to business mergers and all those things can uh be equipped with from those lines and you can have the business jargon also jargon means the terminology of that particular profession so the economic times the wire the uh, wire the guardian these are the four newspapers and the atlantic the atlantic and the new york times you can just do a google search on that page i also read uh, any uh, international uh, uh pages like uh, i read news from the who world health organization i like to read about nasa because they give spe specific articles and it helps us with uh, equipping ourselves with uh, diverse kind of languages the reason i chose guardian and all that because i used to observe these papers at least i guess it's now 7 to 8 years since i've been since 2011 i'm observing these papers more closely and i feel your unfamiliarity with the local issues uh, test your reading skill a lot more more better like for instance if i have to give you a simple example you know what is the nature of congress party you know what is the nature of bjp party right and when you read a news about indian politics you can clearly understand whether you really go back and uh, uh, map the characters to the party or not you can really understand towards the end that these are the things that bjp will say these are the things that congress will say pakka we can uh, get to that but when you read about the republican and uh, democratic news articles you really have to uh, be very careful and analyze and map those characters uh, to the respective parties who is the left wing and who is the right wing types got it so that's the thing so these are some newspapers i hope i answered your question ranjit coming to shrinita you have a word list available in your vocab builder and i'm sure you have a word list as part of your english i mean your material has a word list you'll be tested again through mocks and all that 
but as i said keep reading and that helps us okay so that is about clark 2020 english and uh, this is about the other exams guys as part of our curriculum you have multiple mock exams and mock exams uh, the major portion is definitely going to be CLAT and you'll have exams for other exams. These are the two uh, few other exams that are very popular among our students. SLAT is nothing but symbiosis entrance test and it's for law. And reading comprehension is name of the section. You can expect around 30 questions. Passages are comparatively small in size and uh, we've seen mostly vocabulary and passage oriented questions here from uh, many years. So that's about the uh, slide. And the good part of it is it's a two and a half hour exam. So you have a lot of time there and no negative marking. So that's what students enjoy most about symbiosis entrance test. However, you have a writing assessment test and interview that follows after your written test. So definitely your writing skills are something that's going to help you a lot. So use this time to work on that area too. Next one is ILET. ILET is an entrance exam for NLU Delhi. And uh, NLU Delhi, even though it's an NLU, it's not part of CLAT, so they have their own entrance exam. They've been like that from long time. And uh, it's a 150 mark paper, and the negative marking was introduced uh, probably again, it's like two or three years ago. And this is an exam where we feel it's a speed based exam. Uh, majority of the cream students across the country take it so definitely those students who are in the top league they want to take this test to see where they are standing and uh, definitely this is an exam which tested all the areas of english language passage vocabulary grammar and uh, they are known to twist your paper a little bit with even though the questions are very simple they try to make it lengthy twisted and make it look scary but later it's actually not scary. That's what it is. The other one is LSAT, reading comprehension 24 to 26 uh, questions are what you can expect. LSAT is something like a 100 mark question and it's a total 2 hour 20 minutes was is the approximate time and 35 minutes I guess for each section. They had a sectional breakup if I'm right. Okay. So LSAT is actually heavily on English and uh, the English in LSAT is like very good quality English. It's like uh, a lot of in-depth uh, um, testing is done. It's not superficial and it's not so simple. You really need to understand the passage. So your real English language testing happens there. A lot of reasoning questions are posed and inferred questions are also posed. It's a good quality paper. Okay, guys. So these are three uh, exams and Symbiosis has its campuses in Pune, Noida and uh, uh, Hyderabad and last year I think they've started in Nagpur also. So that's about it. LSAT is an entrance exam which is taken by lots of private colleges and Ziddal is one top college uh, which takes LSAT scores for its admission process. Am I clear there? Can I move? Any questions on any of these exams? Okay. Now, so you've learned about the exams. Uh, somebody was trying to type. Uh, go ahead and type if you have a doubt. Um, so how do we use the course? This is something that you're going to uh, take it very seriously. I hope each one of you is familiar with readmark.in. If you're not familiar with it, please check with Sampath and understand it. Readmark.in is basically a novel that's issued to students every month and you have tests based on that. Now, uh, I'm sure uh, students who are already familiar with Readmark and uh, who have taken the test, uh, I think you should now agree that the latest CLAT pattern is nothing but your Readmark test as far as English is concerned. Do you agree or not? I need a yes or no? It's hugely dependent on the read mark thing because our reasoning questions, contextual vocabulary questions, we had parajumble based questions also based on read mark. So that was something because we have seen over the years that language was something that was playing a bigger role. 
novel reading was an integral part of our curriculum where we encourage students to read novels but however sometimes we have to do it as part of the serious exam based things only then some of you take it seriously uh, you can read more novels than what is given in read mark guys so that's how the read mark was conceptualized and you have these levels of books and genres of reading we had this instance where students were not interested in reading certain type of novels just because it was like um, what i would say is uh, it was non fictional or it was like an autobiography so they were like mm, ma'am i'm not interested like i remember narissa suggesting to one of his student uh, freakonomics was a book but i know that some people might find it very difficult uh, to read it so uh, each one's level is different but the thing is in exam they don't give you passage according to your level it's not still that kind of exam where your next question is dependent on the performance of the current question no guys currently the papers are not like that i don't think any indian entrance exam is of that kind at least as of now so definitely read across the genres so it helps you to read across the genres different varieties of article eclectic reading is what we are able to do it and as you read read mark uh, the novels in the read mark you have to keep certain things in mind and this is something since it's my first class and uh, i would again repeat probably the same thing we'll come across in the month of december when we do our uh, we are almost coming to the end and uh, we are, we'll get into the revision modes by december and uh, when you read your novel right uh, there are a few things that you need to look into obviously the vocabulary is something that you will learn so any new word that you come across please underline that so that's one thing that you could do your vocabulary part of it when you are reading the novel please read it properly rather than jumping because your prepositions and all are usually like an author filling they happen in your mind actually right? when you do preposition based questions and all that so as you read a lot your preposition related knowledge is improved and you can really do better in your grammar areas second thing is observe on the language pattern right the reason i suggest you to focus on the language pattern because the way the characters are introduced the way some information is given uh, helps you to dissect the information more quickly in your uh, exams because uh, if we i'm sure some of you might have already seen the sample papers uh, the way the characters are introduced in uh, descriptive questions were different so sometimes they start with pronoun and then introduce the character sometimes they start the character and then explain the character uh, in order to explain what i'm trying to uh, think uh, uh, i'm sure you have seen movies sometimes in movies uh, Uh, you start with flashback and then go into current and then go back to flashback and do, then come to current and all this right so there's a trend that they try to follow and every movie has a sequence similarly in novel writing also the way the characters are introduced they have a style in which they introduce the characters so that's what i'm trying to say observe the pattern in which the things are positioned and observe the linking words carefully what they mean like nonetheless however uh transition words like uh, similarly likewise and all these things so that you will be able to uh, focus on the changes in idea of the content i mean the content that is given what are the changes in the idea you can understand all those things properly so that is it it is really recommended for you to uh, observe the transition thing there okay so these are two things which will help you as far as read mark is concerned and uh, with uh, with your exam i mean the english uh, exam section but there is one more thing that's going to be uh, an advantage of read mark uh, something which is going to help you on the long run it may not be uh, immediately in the exam paper but something that's going to come up later any guesses i've given a hint of it in the previous slide somewhere try think read mark is going to help you in the long run not directly in the exam but somewhere else vocabulary is yes, but shrinita vocabulary we are going to have it in the exam also right writing skills yes reading speed yes reading speed is also a part of exam sadia and uh, uh, prarthana 
writing skills yes so can you connect with writing skills srinita something else comes along with writing skills slat yes but what in slat mehira reasoning yes obviously but what in slat there was something related to slat i actually said beta analysis yes yes written test yes there's something that follows the written test interview actually right i'm sure yeah very good and she got made uh, gave it sadia gave it. interview interview yes uh, you guys are students and um, as you know what is it that you tell about yourself in an interview academics obviously that's your introduction your academics is going to be the thing and your hobbies right what are your interests and uh, like i like to play video games very good that's a nice hobby but then you should have good knowledge about your levels of video games or ty types of video games now please don't use this and uh, uh, take it as a reason to play video games at home uh, i don't want any complaints from your parents that sirisha ma'am gave us permission to do video games sorry guys uh, i i will say read a lot that will be my suggestion so one of the hobbies that you can say is i read a lot i i read books i read a, a novel a week a month that's a good thing okay what kind of novels do you read then you have your own classification of novels you can say i've read these are the books that i read and some of the books that you read are popular books because last year i think it was uh, in ipm interview or something one of the students said i read rich dad and poor dad so that's a popular book and uh, so the interviewer asked the uh, student about the characters or the some of the things about the essence of the book and all that so they had a good discussion on that so some of the students said i like to read uh, fictional books and latest interviews also with uh, zim premji or something but they had a lot of questions related to the books and authors and kinds of works so definitely it will help you so make sure you have your own analysis after you finish every book so these are the characters in this book these are the main points of what the characters and these are certain things that we we'll learn this book from this book the reason it's going to help you is tomorrow at the ends in the in may 2 2021 you don't need to go through all these novels again you can just go through that just and you're ready for it so this is something that uh, i want you guys to take it seriously because i usually suggest it to students regularly uh, but uh, your batch i want you to take it more seriously and make sure that you maintain a notebook for that so that it helps you on the long run okay so that is another advantage from a read mark and uh, interviews is definitely one big thing that's going to benefit you that you are going to benefit from this which might not be visible immediately but definitely at the latest which okay so those are the things about read mark you'll have your regular test and make sure that you take it properly and uh, the, even though the duration for the read mark is like i think they give you something like 20 to 30 hours of reading is what they suggest uh, but you may not take that much time you can uh, just uh, work on improving your speed on your own you can have a tab on your own speed how many pages were you able to complete by understanding every word okay I mean, of course, when you are doing reading, you don't need to worry about every single word. But since this is a learning process that we are doing, uh, definitely try to note every new word that you come across. Okay, am I clear with that? What I meant is, when we are solving passage, it's okay if we don't know few words. We can still focus on solving the questions. Come back to those words when we actually need to understand the meaning as part of the question. When we do novels, we skip a lot actually, but. since our no novel reading is aimed at improving our reading skills let's take it more seriously uh, where we focus on the new words that we come across that's what i'm trying to suggest next one is crosswords i'm sure all of you are familiar it's on uh, the blog part of lawprep.in and uh, aim to do it better because it it helps your brain to be sharp and it helps you to think in all possible directions topic tests and sectional tests are also part of it whenever you have uh, them take it a mock test that's very important uh, i'm sure as part of the exams you will be able to attend some questions in the given time line and most of the time i've seen students leave the passages to the end that used to be the thing in the earlier times when there was only one passage have you don't have an option all the questions will be passage oriented uh, but uh, the thing is those passages that you're going to leave make sure that you take it again and analyze it i'm sure the team might introduce some mocks with different variations of questions also because we need to be prepared uh, 
that that's the back end part of it they'll do it uh, but yeah that's the something that i have with the mocks ensure that you analyze the questions where you went wrong because it's very important not just to write the test but analyzing where you went wrong because you should not repeat again those mistakes that's the goal that you should have okay the packs of material you'll have different packs i'm sure uh, uh, you're familiar that the product note is uploaded in your uh, e lectures tab itself and uh, there's the list of uh, packs of material that you'll be given uh, and the workbooks and question packs whatever they call it ensure that you solve them all thoroughly and whenever you have doubts you can always post them on the discussion board you'll have the team respond to it within 24 hours uh, they usually take that time man as a target okay if you use all these things definitely i believe you can uh, be in a comfortable position in your 2021 and again don't take choice don't do just those things that you like you have to take every single bit of resource given to you and utilize it to the fullest okay any questions on the resources uh, and all apart from that you'll have lots more exercises and other things you'll have supplements and others but that was a broad view so moving on to the english sections how are we going to uh, get into the english sections uh, well uh, you'll have the regular curriculum delivery you'll have uh, workshops you'll have uh, revision and all that because now we are starting in april april batch uh, that's so we call you like extensive students that's the name that's usually given to you and uh, april may time again you'll be like already done with definite uh, conceptual learning so yours will be called like an advanced learning where you are more uh, uh, foc where we focus more on your practice and uh, final fine tuning of your skill sets and all that so the learning process is usually uh, i would say in broad base every faculty has their own term uh, obviously the program's terminology will be shared by the product team and note uh, the foundation is something very important but the basic skill sets uh, skill sets uh, are taught and then you are given uh, knowledge or concepts where uh, information about how to handle different things like uh, rules of grammar strategies to handle reading comprehension strategies to ha handle para jumbles all those things are taught then we have workshop sessions where we'll have questions where you'll solve the questions your speed is observed then we'll have discussion on those sessions and all that we'll have a lot of tests as part of the curriculum and test based analysis is also going to be there so these are the different things that will happen in different formats over the period okay so the question uh, section in english is going to be divided into these four areas vocabulary is uh, one thing where you learn the strategies to improve your vocabulary whether it could be contextual root word etymology etc and the question types the question types uh, in vocabulary are very uh, diverse like there's a huge list you have synonyms you have antonyms you have contextual vocabulary you have analogies you have sentence completion you have foreign words you have idioms you have phrases and uh, word usage questions that was introduced somewhere in 2015 uh, paper i think and then you have contextual vocabulary so diverse things are there and you'll be learning the strategies to handle each of them on one on, on one side you will be learning words and how to remember words on the other side we'll learn about uh, how to handle these question types because both the things matter knowledge matters and question type also matters because one helps your quickness in solving another helps you to figure it out to solve uh, whatever way it turns out to be even if you're unfamiliar with something you should still be able to solve it so that's the role played by strategies one is the knowledge part and the other one is the strategy part of it grammar rules of grammar are taught initially we'll go more in detail re recapping i'm sure uh, re uh, all of you are familiar with grammar and you have studied since high school and uh, uh, I'm, i know that many of you are um, very good with the forms of verbs and all that and uh, when we do grammar especially with uh, clat and all and uh, other faculty we always look at it students are very good with the rules of grammar but the problem is when they have to figure out what to keep in that particular blank that's where the missing link is 
you need to really understand the clues given in the sentence every question there are clues given so our grammar classes are focused on giving you rules yes knowledge part is there but the questions are something that will be asked in such a way that you'll identify the clues around in the given sentence you apply the knowledge identify the clues and finally answer your question so rules and clues both the things are important okay so you'll be picking up the skills from the faculty about how to identify the clues what type of answer goes into this okay uh, coming to reading comprehension definitely there's going to be a huge focus on reading comprehension we've always emphasized on reading a lot and uh, we are going to do more uh, obviously again uh, speed reading is something that we will uh, start with however that's something that it will be great if you take a little time and do uh, because uh, it's a practice kind of thing i mean it's not just theory it's practical uh, so it's important that you really involve yourself in because uh, the problem is uh, when i ask students uh, how to do this they have all the theory here very good they can duplicate me in my own class uh, but what matters is what is important is duplicate me in the exam right that is very important because that is the ultimate thing needed it's not just the knowledge part of it or the concept part of it but the application part of it that you need to master and application comes into picture only if you are able to repeat it over a period of time application comes into picture if you practice right you can't uh, learn to ride a cycle by just reading the booklet of how to ride a cycle you need to learn the balancing only when you practice do you agree or not the same thing happens with uh, reading comprehension you need to keep on reading and there you need to uh, apply the strategies the thing is when you read a novel you don't follow the rules of reading comprehension when you read an article you don't follow the reading comprehension rules when you're practicing and study us you don't follow there also but suddenly you expect the speed to come up in the final exam how does that happen right you need to chase yourself with that timeline in every single movement that you're dedicating towards class your mind should be tuned to be 100% alert with your practice once you're alert in the practice subconsciously in the final like final thing when you are actually doing the exam everything comes into play nobody tells you that you have to think like that in the exam because it's going to be automatic your rule the strategy should be like automatically inbuilt in you where it should be like you should be better off tomorrow than me that's the challenge i leave it to the students where you have to do come to my speed of solving or uh, do better than me that's something that i'll be proud of got it so practice all those skills we'll also learn about the approaches to passages there are different types of passages as i said you have fiction you have non fiction you have science history um, philosophy liberal arts uh, sociology etc etc diverse areas are going to be there and uh, we'll learn about how to handle different types of passages different approaches like skim scan 3m uh, uh, rephrase and recall all these things will be taught and uh, obviously the question types again that's a common thing that you'll find there are different types of questions that we'll see in reading comprehension direct questions indirect questions i'm sure you have observed the mocks over the last uh, few uh, mocks that you have taken i'm sure you're taking mock exams i recommend you to strongly take the mock exams some of you might think um, ma'am we are not skilled enough yet we haven't learned uh, the concepts how do you ask us to take the mock exam mock exam is not just to uh, test your knowledge guys mock exam is to expose you to the types of papers right you'll you'll get that speed or uh, strategy i mean how to vary your thinking process just like a batsman on a field in on a cricket field a batsman has to know to play all kinds of balls whether it's uh, spin or uh, fast or anything like that right uh, the batting is same thing strike that's it but the ball is the thing that is different so your slat l sat and flat are the different balls you're the batsman and you just need to hit a run or score a run so you need to tune yourself so unless you know the patterns you cannot uh, understand it better this uh, the various patterns are also given to you just to give you uh, 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 an idea about uh, importance of different question types also because uh the, the after a period of time i usually get this question ma'am is it important to read this ma'am is it sufficient to read this well everything is important guys because we as i said i want my students to be equipped with every possible ammunition that's a simple thing 
today i'm proud to say that uh, i have just talked to seniors i was i guess it was last class couple of days back and everybody was like there's no difference with the latest pattern they're pretty comfortable they don't feel anything as a change as far as english is concerned and of course they feel the same thing with other areas because there are it's they're mentally prepared for challenges and they were uh, gradually having that idea from november it's just the speed that they need to master that simple so they're not actually really worried a lot and when surprises come in the paper they learn to handle so you need to tune yourself to handle that in the exam so how does how does that happen when you prepare yourself for every possible thing yes that is the goal that we should have okay so approaches question types direct questions indirect questions uh, like uh, inferred questions are there uh, uh, and uh, how do we handle each question type etc how do we read different passages how do we uh, improve our uh, focus while reading passages how do we get the gist of the passage and uh, all these questions will be learned all these question types will be dealt strategies to handle them will also be taught another one is para jumble of course for that also i can give a question type because uh, i guess it's been at least four or five years when they started introducing new variations of para jumble questions also earlier it was just jumble sentences in one way or the other but later they started increase, uh, asking us which one is the third sentence or fourth sentence so that's what it is uh, in terms of uh, para jumbles meher i think that's a question for uh, clat i'll answer that later okay so this is about uh, english sessions and uh, reading comprehension and the different things any questions so far on L alp english sessions pretty good clear okay good now here i have some uh, preparation tips here you can I'll take a quick look at the preparation tips while I explain. Okay. read very range of books and articles to develop skill expertise and reading comprehension because your passages are going to be from different areas logical reasoning is going to be one type of passage legal reasoning is going to be another type uh, gk obviously you know that even in gk they are going to have passages and all that uh, english is going to be passage oriented where you have descriptive fiction non fiction and analytical so equip yourself with varied kinds of uh, authors and books so that's something that is a suggestion observe sentence structures while reading this is very important and whenever you come across uh, different sentence structures uh, make sure that you uh, note down the entire line so that you are familiar with because um, uh, once upon a time we had this uh, situation uh, where is like uh, the word uh, which of the following is the farthest meaning of the given word which of the following is the farthest meaning of the given word what do you mean by that farthest meaning it's nothing but yes some of you are typing is it a synonym or a, a antonym it's an antonym yes now what will happen if you don't get that that's the problem that's the problem so you need to observe that language patterns and all that you have to get hold of that and vocabulary uh, obviously you'll have lots of uh, strategies that you'll come across you have vocab builder and uh, which has i think the total word should uh, sum up to be at least 1000 minimum in the vocab builder and with all the other words and all i'm sure it's 1100 or more you can quiz yourself because words are something like Uh, you can't sit down like I'll this whole week I'll learn learn words. It doesn't happen that way, guys. Don't do that mistake. Take a daily target, like twenty words or thirty words. Take a daily target and ask someone you. Now that you are at home, and I'm sure you have time to quiz yourself. Ask yourself. You have you make your own uh, 
way, whichever way, ask your sibling to question you or someone to question you or you can just cover it up and question yourself. And that's the way to learn words because, and always uh, think of a sentence because ultimately you have a goal towards writing skills also. Tomorrow when you go to law school, you have to do drafting. Yeah, you'll be part of a lot of mood codes. So your vocabulary is going to equip yourself in terms of better communication. Right? So your word knowledge is definitely going to help you on the long run. So uh, ensure that you quiz yourself and uh, focus on the usage of the words. Because uh, when you focus on the usage, it stays, stays in the mind for a longer period. And even if you do not remember the exact meaning of the word, you still have an opportunity to guess the word. You can deduct something, right? So that's something that I usually suggest with vocabulary. And uh, like for instance, today I've learned 30 words, right? And uh, so tomorrow morning, I'll just cover it up and recall. And when I do my recall, I'll realize that, okay, five words are missing. I'm not able to recall. I'll just put a star mark or something and uh, I'll add those five again to the 30. So I'll recall again. After a couple of times, you, your focus is on those five specific ones. So definitely uh, you'll improve your word knowledge and you'll figure out some technique, some mnemonic to help yourself uh, mem memorize that word in the right manner. Okay. So quiz yourself and recall yourself. And uh, speed is one thing that I want you to keep a tab on. When you're reading articles, I'm sure we enjoy uh, making our parents believe that we are reading a lot and we are spending a lot of time with our books. Yes, I was a student once upon a time. And uh, But ask yourself, how much time are you taking to read one single page or two single pages? Right? I did have situations where you know, some of my students get caught in the study as 9 o'clock, they are in this page, first page. 10 o'clock when I come back there in the second page, that's it. Hardly one page for uh, one hour, that's too much of a reading speed, guys. You have to improve on that. Even when you're doing your academic subjects, your speed matters, your summary techniques matter. It helps you to do better. So make sure that your time is taken care of. The purpose of reading is different. Obviously, I agree to that. When you're reading novel, it's different. When you're reading textbook, it is different. But uh, you have to memorize when you're read the textbook. I agree to that part, but uh, definitely keep a tab on the time. Okay. Because that tells you whether you're going in a direction which is right or sometimes keeping a tab on time helps us to stay focused also. Right. It, uh, it helps us to uh, uh, see our improvement also because when you see your improvement, it gives you hope. Right. Every Sunday, if some of you, uh, let's say somebody is doing a weight check every Sunday and if uh, in spite of doing a lot of exercise, there's no improvement on weight loss, they'll be losing hope, right? And uh, if they just do exercise without keeping a check on the weight, they'll, they'll not know if there's an improvement or not. So you have to have your measures. Metrics is important. Okay? Rules of grammar, please, please, please remember the rules of grammar. If I have to ask you, come on, what are the rules of subject verb agreement? You should have them on your fingertips. It shouldn't be like grammar is like I read the sentence. It makes me feel this is right. So I'll fill it up, get out of that thought process. It doesn't work that way. Grammar is like signs or maths. I mean, if you're afraid of maths, it's not formula based. Don't worry. Uh, but grammar is something which is rule based and you can definitely score better. Okay, because uh, I have seen even in the latest pattern of CLAT, error correction is an area apart from uh, prepositions. Error correction is something that has come up. And error correction questions are something that you can handle better if, you're, uh, if you have a good command on uh, grammar. Uh, on articles of English grammar also, it is easy for us to put an article when there's a blank. But if I give you a sentence and then I ask you, uh, tell me in this sentence where you'll keep a uh, article the, then... It is your rules that actually will help you, right? And uh, the latest third sample paper of CLAT also, they were like, okay, how many times do you think article the is appropriate in this particular sentence? It was more like introduction of the article. So far, we haven't seen that kind of thing. Fill in the blanks were there and uh, error corrections were there, uh, which is like grammar error corrections. But this uh, pattern is something which is related to another exam. But they've introduced that in CLAT also. Got it? So introduction of an article is a concept which you can master only if you know the rules better. You can figure out, okay, does this rule apply? It's like a checklist that runs in your mind and then tuck, 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 you can mark your answer. So definitely rules are something very important. You should have them on your fingertips. Am I clear? Is there any question about any of these areas? 
Anybody? Which? Okay. There was one question. I think it was about CLAT uh, a application or something, uh, which I'll handle later. Okay. I'm moving on then. The reading sources, I, I just repeated some of them earlier and I'm repeating again. Articles is one thing that you can uh, definitely read. Articles on different areas uh, and columns opinions and editorials definitely if you're someone who is a beginner then start with the first page of the new uh, newspaper simple articles about familiar topics if you're someone who's uh, gained good experience then go to the opinions editorials the reason i uh, put editorials as a second step is editorials are basically opinions and you need to have some knowledge to understand your editorials better okay so that's the reason i put it and 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 editorials is something that's going to help you in terms of understanding the author better. Books, definitely all the books that are available for you as part of your readmark, different genres. Any famous books, famous publishers, definitely go ahead. I'm sure these days there are a lot of books available online. Read good books, okay? Don't just read anything to kill time. It doesn't help. Short stories are also good. There are some short stories which have good lists like uh, in the latest uh, CLAT uh, thing they've given couple of authors ram chandra guha's book and uh, uh, ram bhattacharya's books and all that these were certain names that were uh, given and um, from my side if you want to increase improve your vocabulary for law students within our uh, student circle we i usually recommend robin cook books for english vocabulary because when we were suggesting for students who are uh, preparing for overseas and all that, definitely Robin Cook was one book that we regularly suggest with good vocabulary. Then you have Jeffrey Asha, obviously, that's a series of articles that you have. And for law students, uh, Padma Ma'am uh, Minsha, last class was done by her. She usually uh, suggests John Grisham novels because uh, they have that uh, litigation kind of mindset according to her. So these are some books and beyond that, you can read any of the other articles. One thing is when you read articles and when you read newspapers, uh, I want you to do a test to yourself. I'm sure some of you read books and you say, ma'am, I'm reading a lot of books, but ask yourself, is that book uh, too easy for you, right? If it's too easy for you, then I think you have to pick up the next level of books. How do you judge yourself, whether it's an easy book for me or a difficult book for me? Well, if every single word is very easy and you're able to just turn the pages like this, then it's easy book. There's no difficulty in language pattern or comprehension or anything. And that's an easy book for you. Okay, so this is a brief intro, uh, intro about all our faculty, myself, uh, as I said, Sarisha. And I'll be the trainer for CLAT and uh, CLAT verbal and reasoning part of it. Now, obviously, I'm from an IT Warangal. That's my graduation and master's from IIT Chicago. We have Janvi. Janvi is also a faculty for CLAT, and uh, obviously, she has done IP last year for Danville and MA English and Literature from OU. We have uh, Selma. Selma was uh, our IP faculty also many years ago. She was with Janvil for academics. Uh, but later she moved on with the uh, IELTS, Spoken English, and CLAT. She's been working with the PIAS from for quite some time. Uh, she also has a PG and MA in English from OU and Manu. And we have Sayed and Nina with a vast amount of experience and postgraduate and uh, a lot of educational qualifications and certificates to her uh, academic uh, areas. And obviously she's a verbal trainer for CLAT. So these are some people who will be doing your classes as per the curriculum and as per the planning and all that and you might have more other faculty joining a little later okay uh, and she answered antonym just now i think that's for the father's word Meher Nanta, you had a question about editing uh, is it about CLAT application or anything specific Okay, guys, so that's about the PT, uh, PPT. Now let's move on to the questions. So just take uh, take the worksheet. Okay. Meher, uh, I'm not, uh, I don't think CLAT has that editing option. At least to my knowledge, I haven't seen it. Um, 
but i think sambhat can you answer I, at least to my knowledge i haven't seen plat as an application which is having the editing uh, part of it uh, because we freeze options very carefully and uh, however we'll see if uh, things change because uh, uh, over the years i don't remember plat having any editing option i don't remember anything like that simbiosis is being a private university whenever students have any errata we were we used to try approaching them through emails and all that but uh, that's it uh, lsat also we uh, uh, for centers and center related changes we used to apply, approach again through uh, not through application but through the contact uh, email and all it work so we didn't have to try uh, for clad though there are other engineering exams uh, where they have a clear thing given in the application it says this is your editing period but i don't remember anything like that seen on clad application and mostly that's the reason we ask students to fill up the uh, colleges specifically very carefully uh, the kind of clad things uh, nlus and nlu order preference list by the way meher uh, why are you asking that question because uh, next year things may change they might give you an edit a uh, period of that and by the way now uh, it's so the thing is clat also maybe this year because the uh, way things are going they may have this year's uh, editing option given because um, and je has changed its uh, center allocation part of it usually centers exam centers they don't give a changing thing on that editing thing on that but this year they have opened it up so i don't know if they might want to do it they might not okay so but i think sampath will be the right person to follow it up with the latest information okay so i think you have seen the questions um did you get to see 1 to 5 Questions one to five. I'll give you two minutes to solve. Whoever is done, you can say done. Our friends will compete with us with our solving speed. It also helps me to know what's your speed of solving. That's good, Safan. Now, next question will be your accuracy. Okay, I'm going to ask that also, Safan. Okay. Anybody else? We have thirty seconds more. Shivat, we got good. Drew Jane, good. Okay, Niharika is also done. So I am proceeding with the discussion. Then Mihira is done. Bhavita is typing. Good. So I'm continuing with the explanation, guys. Is that okay? Uh, if you are taking more time, don't worry. You can solve simultaneously along with me. Is that okay? So the first question that we have here, right? Choose the antonym of the given word. This is an interesting question. I think it was part of uh, Ilet probably. Cash drop, aspirational, and marketers dream the high palai are on the march. Writes Birdy Smith. Somebody writes it. Now March, the moment March word comes, people will think it's month of March. Well, it's not that month of March. It's a different March. Now the high palai word is an interesting word which is usually used for masses. Masses means common people. Now the meaning of the word is common people. What is the opposite of common people? Common people is common people, right? So opposite of it, obviously, meaning is this. Now I have two options here: middle class and working class. So usually, common people is something which is treated to be close with common uh, working class people, the blue collar jobs. So opposite of it, the appropriate one turns out to be aristocracy. Technically, 
I don't think they have a very clear uh, opposite uh, for hoi polloi. But the meaning means common masses and working class is close to that. And aristocracy turns out to be a standard opposite. B is the right answer in this question. Very good. So now aristocracy is a root word which is ending with uh, C-R-A-C-Y. Can you think of other words which end with crassy? Let's see who gives me the first word. Any other word with ends? Democracy, very good. Crassy is a root, a root word which means rule of. And uh, democracy is ruled by the people of the people for the people types. Theocracy is ruled by religious, spiritual heads and all. You have gerontocracy. Uh, that is uh, ruled by uh, uh, the old kind of thing. Geras is a root word for old. I think you also have ruled by rich people. That is probably plutocracy. You'll have to check your hasha has helped it out. Plutocracy is another word. So different kinds of rules that we have. Next question, moving on to the second question. There's a lot in life that can leave you nonplussed. Now, there's a lot in life that can leave you confused. That's something that we can, even if we do not understand this word, we can still get the meaning. So this word nonplussed is confused. Now, opposite of it should be something which is not confused. Think, think, think. B and D is coming up, so just be careful, guys, between B and D. Perturbed and perturbed. Perturbed means disturbed. So unperturbed is not disturbed. So answer here will be D. Disconcert is, again, it's something similar to be uh, confused and uh, uh, you're lost a little there. Dumbfound and uh, astound is more to be like you're amazed and surprised. So A and C are happily gone. Your answer should be falling between B and D. But perturbed is a pretty common word for us. We all know that perturbed is a simple word. Uh, I'm perturbed at your statement. I'm disturbed. So unperturbed is the answer for the second question. Next one. It was marvelous to see how gingerly the little bees footed in such places. Uh, little bees, probably they are trying to uh, attribute it to the kids. Gingerly is cautiously actually. It is marvelous. So the author is actually positive about it. So it was marvelous to see how the little beast worked in it. So gingerly should be something positive. Okay. And here the question is about synonym. So just don't rush and be careful. Don't rush guys. They are asking for a synonym, not antonym. Read the instructions carefully. Um, so gingerly is cautiously actually. Carefully. Opposite will be careful, uh, careless, but the meaning is assiduous. Assiduous is something which is like uh, very with too much care and uh, caution. Okay, here the word should actually be caution. Like for instance, if there's a broken glass piece, you don't step on it just like that. You make sure that you don't hurt yourself, right? So gingerly is more to do with that. So B is a better possible answer. Next, fourth question. She is also an upcoming fiction writer with a penchant inclination for the dark and the surreal. surreal. So choose the meaning of surreal. Surreal is bizarre, weird, something like that. Yes, uh, so that's a simple word. Edgy is a word which means uh, tense. So answer for the fourth question is A. Very good. Very good, Himasiri, Niharika and Harshita. Now coming to the fifth question, this was I think uh, 2018 pattern, I guess. Students are like commonly confusing words in the format of a paragraph and all. That was interesting uh, because uh, you need little time to solve. And uh, instead of sen sentences which were different sentences, earlier they used to have five sentences. Now they just made it into a single uh, paragraph. So let's see. Whenever you have these questions, commonly confusing word, what I try to say is, uh, freeze those which you are very confident about and then proceed to the others and simultaneously play with the options. So intentionally high rise wall serve as street paintings or canvases. They are obviously canvases. You have two different canvases. Election canvas is different and this is a painting canvas. In Delhi, Gurga artists have earmarked. Obviously earmarked is a better word than um, this one. So it should be earmarked. After the civic authorities, uh, they said yes and okay to it. So this is a better word. A walk through the installment or installation. Installment is fee payment and installment. So there should be installations. For interaction is instituted or envisage. Envisage is more to do with a vision, envisioned or vision something. It is hoped. So you're, you vision, take a vision, you have a future vision. Imagine something. 
and you hope about that, right? So that's why this is also another clue. A A B B. So C. Yes, somebody said C. Yeah, that's right, guys. So B A A B B. Okay. Good. Next set of questions then. Six to ten. You can type to the question number so that I am not confused which one you are giving me an answer. I'll not respond, Safan, until all are finished. Okay? You can do your job, you can type, but I'll not respond. Done, guys. Tenth question. Good. So I'm just moving on with the explanation then. To bury the hatchet. Uh, whenever you have idioms, don't take the literal individual words, meaning it's a full idiom in use. To make cremate kakas, dead body of an animal, to hide some treasure. And uh, what else do you have here? To plant grass in the field, to end a feud with an enemy. So the answer here will be to end the feud with an enemy. If you want to overcome some quarrel, put an end to it. Good. Nice, guys. Next, FOPA is a social blunder. So this is the Amicus Curie. Yes, 7 B is the right answer. Amicus Curie. Now, even if you're not familiar with uh, the word, you might say adios amigos. Uh, you might have heard the word like amicable, amiable, all those words. So, somewhere we connect with friend. So, answer here is a friend of Coke. Very good, guys. Good, nice. Next, ninth question is slightly different and idiom in a different manner. Well, they tried to ask you for a better fit idiom, but here it looks like they are asking us for the right meaning. Raymond likes to have a finger in every pie. He wants to do everything, actually. Right? He wants to do everything. He wants to meddle in everything. So this word is pretty clear. It's a simple question and simple answer. That's good, Ananya. Good, Neharika and Meher. Now coming to the 10th question, I like the 10th question not for the reason of it's difficult or easy. It's like an innovative way of troubling students actually, <laughs> right? It's a simple question but it looks like time consuming question and this is what you have to be prepared for in the exam. Is there anything different that you don't know about direct speech and active voice, passive voice? No. But now this question, the moment they see it, oh my God, you have to think about four different options to find one single answer. You have to frame four different questions. Uh, so that's what goes in here. And it's an odd one out question based on a grammar concept. That's like an interesting one. Somebody was like marvelous and creating it. it. It looks like to be a very difficult question to start off with. But it's a pretty simple one. A, B, D are all direct and direct speech and C turns out to be something which is little inactive passive voice yes b some uh, even b and c was something that we were confused with because a and d definitely the answer is 100 percent perfect b maybe you'll feel a little difference in the answer but c is turning out to be not in direct indirect speech types it's more to be active passive voice types so that's how it turned out to be an answer great so that's one uh, thing that we go for it. So C is the actual answer in this case, guys. Okay. You're right, guys. Yashika, it's C. I'm moving on to question number 11. 
And let's do these questions simultaneously, actually. It's not a big deal. Sunita decided to set some time every day for prayer. Set aside. The moment we start reading, we fill it up, right? That's what I say. Keep reading a lot because automatically prepositions can be filled. Because if you really break your head, is it up? Is it aside? Is it on? Is it in? Then there's a lot of confusion that creeps into your mind and I don't want that to happen. The minister flew in, flew about, flew over, flew along, flew over, see is the best possible answer. Identify the incorrect sentences. So this is where the uh, thing comes in. 13th question. Well, organize science fair. Whenever you have words, you have to see if there's spellings and other things are right. Now in all these things, the standalone, very abnormal one is C actually. It's the biggest flaw, I would say. Okay. It's the biggest flaw because... Uh, Blood donation will not begin a camp all by itself. It's an activity, actually. Blood donation camp, camp will begin. So that's the parallelism kind of positioning of words related error. It's a modifier, uh, it's a modifier error, guys, where there's positioning error. And you'll learn more about modifiers and parallelism in uh, one of our grammar lectures. And um, we have seen parallelism and modifiers to be Tested a lot in CLAT before CLAT actually came in. More than CLAT, before to CLAT, uh, when NALSAR and uh, NLSU was conducting its own papers, they were having modifier-based questions a lot. It's a very intense intense uh, question type, and we, you need to really be cautious. So that's the thing. Let's go to 14th. and 15 take a little time i give you two minutes One more minute. Fourteen and fifteen, both. Let's do two parajambles, okay? Good, summon with them. Thirty seconds more, guys. Okay then guys, then I'm proceeding to explain the two questions that we have. Whenever we learn about parajambles, as I said, parajambal question types, you have two question types here. Uh, 14 turns out to be like one, uh, four sentences and they asked you to fix, find the jumbled one. 15 turns out to be the first and sixth one fixed and uh, the four in between are jumbled ones. I would say 15 should be easier one than 14. The reason being is you have to check which one follows immediately after one and which one precedes a six, which one is before six. These two, if you match, it becomes more easy. Apart from that, when we do parajambles, we do a lot of strategies about nouns, pronouns, and uh, transition words. Lots of rules that we can still apply. But ultimately, obviously, you have to read them all, read the complete sentence, try to make a sense, uh, try to understand the meaning and uh, form a logically coherent paragraph. 
So definitely I recommend you to read the entire thing without reading you cannot do it and read. Now, so let me read it now. Negotiations to reduce the Greek debt have been suspended after no agreement could be reached last week. It is a ruthless concept, contest dominated by so-called Trioka, the European Union, Central Bank, International Monetary Fund. At some point in near future, Greece seems certain to default on its obligation. But the drama surrounding the talks in Athens, Berlin shows that there will be um, nothing cooperative about the Greek default. Now you talk about drama in sentence D and you talk about it being ruthless in sentence D. So that clearly tells you that these two are connected. So DB turns out to be a mandatory pair out there. So you have one link there and then you have the other sentences. So yes, D is the appropriate answer. Here, AC, DB is the final answer. Because here one thing is last week and then in near future, that's another way of connecting it. So AC, DB is another thing. One is related to the timeline. One is related to the preposition uh, pronoun rule that we have here. Right? Now, next one. I hope the... 14th one is clear to all. Coming to the 15th question. As I said, this is an easier one where we need to try to connect between what comes after one. I would never given much thought on how I would die, though I had reason enough to in the last few months. But even I had, I would not have imagined it like this. So in the question, in the first one, which is fixed, it tries to talk about how part of it. Now, when you have the how part of it here, it is a question format, so you need to have an explanation to that. So the one that follows will be a question answer kind of thing. Now, what turns out to be like an answer there? Right? So I didn't imagine like this and C is the sentence that follows one there. So because it says, I stared without breathing across the long room into the dark eyes of the hunter and he looked pleasantly back at me. So C turns out to be like the line that follows one. That's something that I have. So one C now. What next? Uh, is it uh, uh, C, A, C, uh, D and uh, B options? C and D options are gone because you feel C is an appropriate one. Is it C, A, D, B or C, B, D, A? You have to be a little more cautious because it's not just that you have to fill. You also have to fill what precedes six more carefully. Uh, I regret about my decision. That's what is in six. So you need to think of that decision also. What is the decision in this thing? I knew that I've never gone to Fox. I wouldn't be facing death now. This is about decision related to this. Right? So that's something that you need to connect also. Uh, so you have one C that's clear. Let's see now. No believe in. Even. Even is a word which is like continuation type of it that you could think of. Surely it was a good way to die, uh, die in the place of someone else, someone I liked, uh, someone I loved, noble even, that ought to count for something. Um, I knew if I hadn't gone there, I wouldn't die, but terrified as I was, I couldn't regret the decision. So the answer should be C, A, D, B. So I would prefer B over uh, A here. Am I clear, guys? Bhavita, Ananya, Samanvita, all of you marked A. I hope the explanation is clear why I am preferring B over A. Okay, good. Nice. Next, we have passage here. This passage, I think, was from Glad or Islet. Um, and uh, not very difficult, guys, because I made sure that this class exercise is not too difficult. It's try to pick as much as possible the easier ones or the medium ones at the max. Um, even then, if you're not able to do it, don't worry. So I have a simple passage here. Well, the current sign of passage is going to be 450. Yes, I know that. But uh, as you know, we have to prepare for everything. So I picked up the passages from the last exams where you'll get to know how much size they had. Okay, this is a little bigger than 450, I would say. It will turn out to be something like the 600 words. But read them, you'll understand an, an important concept after you solve them. When you read passages, one tip is 
make sure that you take a note of what is there. Um, the first paragraph we talk about this, second paragraph we talk about this. Those things will help us. And this passage is pretty much direct, guys. You can see questions and move to passage or passage to questions. It's up to you. Uh, but if you get to see the questions here, you'll know that it's direct passage. So that also helps you at times. Are you guys done? If yes, then I can move on. Yes, good. This is only if you guys say done, I will be able to understand that you're actually done, guys. So I need that response from you, okay? Okay, so here we have uh, IoT here. I tried to underline a few liners few points of which you should be doing simultaneously when you are reading because that helps us to get a gist of the passage okay so starting from the sorry uh, so for the first uh, paragraph uh, IOT has had an impact across all fields be it industries government small businesses and all that so this is an impact across all fields that's the first thing that you'll understand Next, what is IoT? IoT is something which can be con connected, anything that can be connected. And you have an example of the entire connection part that's coming up here. But there's also this, the new rule of the future is going to be anything that can be connected and will be connected. Okay, the future thing, how the things are going to be in future. IoT is making its impact uh, in healthcare, where it's able to interact with the patients in remote fashion. Then um, IOT's uh, impact is seen in sporting field where they are having sensors on balls, bats, and they're having chips and uh, 
uh, on clothes where they can study the stress and strain part of it. Uh, then you have all fields, the impact is there. And then you talk about the security part of it and IoT related aspects. Uh, after that, we move on to the education related aspects also. Right, how it's going to help the teachers, what they're going to do, and uh, how it's going to impact the schools, the safety, and other things. Now, interesting thing about this question type, this passage that we have is none of the questions here are like difficult ones. They are mostly the skim scan one. And there's one uh, entrance exam actually. This is like related to another uh, exam and other course, and they have like uh, passages like which are like a couple of pages. And they have good number of questions based on that 15 or so. But the interesting part of it is they get questions like from each paragraph. Like first question is from first paragraph and second one is second. Now if anybody thinks of, oh, this is a lengthy one or something which is very time consuming, difficult to answer. Well, actually, most of the questions are direct. The answer for every question is seen in the passage. It's just that you need to have patience to search it. And uh, is the language very difficult? No. Is it very difficult to read that you have to go back and read multiple times? No. So here the only thing that I see is you need to have patience and time to read. Once you have both, the entire passage turns out to be an easy one and I'm sure you agree to that. So ultimately it's the speed that matters which will help you to score all the 10 marks here. What is IoT, a concept of connecting? It is internet in a different form. It is the internet but connected to anything analyzing machine or data collection c and d are happily gone so it's between a and b 16 what's your answer guys b through very good it's a pretty clear one iot is nothing but uh, connected things because the first paragraph gives us the answer connect anything that can be connected internet of things anything that can be connected will be connected that's something that we have it is said that now we look at time differently where did we have that uh, time pattern the moment you have your alarm system on, you can set your timer for the uh, mobile, for the system, for the heater, geyser, for your coffee machine and all. I have this thing, somebody was saying the other time, uh, there's washing machine technology where you connect your washing machine to your mobile phone. So you have to <laughs> put your clothes from laundry to the dryer, it kind of gives you a beep there. So, so you have to respond to that sound and go back and fix it up. This kind of connecting devices are coming up these days and many of you know the alarm system where the alarm system of the home is tampered immediately message goes to the owner or uh, police services whatever they are connected to that's something that we have so but we look at time because time is connected to different things now so different devices a is the best possible answer it's different format no you're not reading mmdd yy date format type of times no or 24 hour or 12 hour calendar no Aeroplane and people are specific things they are connected to. It's devices that we have. I cannot turn on another person based on your time, but yes. 18th question. IoT will help in simplifying patient-physician interaction because we have specific data where we can go and search where uh, interaction is possible remotely. That's what we have. Very clear line. Remote interaction B is a possible answer. Very good, guys. Now, how will IoT work in uh, sporting field? Through sport fields with chips. Are you placing chips in sporting field through special machine, through minute wearable chips which are connected through special moves by uh, people? 19 C is the best part. C is the best part of the answer. Even though you might be tempted to mark other things, the most clear and appropriate one is C. Yes, I hope C is evident the answer for all. It's directly there, C. Wearable devices is something that you have in that uh, line because um, chips are put on to wearable devices you have in that paragraph and so that you can measure the signs of stress and strain. Preventive measure is imperative because of that is something that is connected to the stress and strain part of it. B is the answer that it helps us to identify the stress and strain. Very good. Very good. Pratt. 21. One of the major concerns of IoT is obviously with millions of people getting connected, uh, security becomes a big issue. That's the line that we had. We have a specific paragraph there. Safety and security is going to be a thing. Storing, tracking, analyzing, a lot of things have to come into picture. So 21A is the best possible answer. 
Pradna right, 21A is the best run, so good Hari Priya. So one of the major concerns, it's a clear cut paragraph that you have security. Technology and IoT has benefited education considerably because again, it's the next paragraph which is related to the education there, how it's going to help improving the lesson, keep track of resources or uh, help teachers to track or uh, help do keeping up with the change in learning. Obviously, it's the change in learning that we have. D is the best possible answer here. World is fast paced and keep up with this and need an infusion with learning. So changing learning, D is the best possible answer. That's the first line in the paragraph there. Now, 23rd, teachers can use this to D again to teach with more resources, create a smart classroom and reach out to the world. Because you have the last line of the passage again, create smart classroom, ensure the reach of, of this content to any corner of the world. You have the last line there, very good. 22D, it's the last line of the passage. Uh, select the title which is most suitable. Now, so far, the questions were mostly direct. If you were able to identify the line in the passage, you can go for it. But now, this is the title of the passage. And when you do the title of the passage question, you have to keep the entire passage in mind. You can't pick up an answer which is just random. Okay. And when we think of title, you can think of a title, obviously, IoT related title and IoT in different fields is something that we can come up with. Let's see the option. Curse of Boon, that's too specific and it talks about the negativity that's eliminated. Uh, IoT is changing the way we learn. That's very specific to education, so that's gone. Now, answer should be between B and D. IoT and a life tomorrow and IoT is all pervading. Now, B and D can be the possible answers, but I have two close answers I have to do. I have to identify one because I cannot mark two. Now let's see which answer will help us to go with D, which answer will help us to go with B. We go with uh, IoT is all pervading because its impact is seen in all fields. Agreed. That is definitely there and you can think of it. But uh, is IoT currently there in all fields or is it going to be the future? Well, the line in the first paragraph clearly talks about how the future is going to be and how the impact is going to be bigger in future. So it is IoT plus future combination is what I would say because IoT is all pervading is more, I can say it's connected to present only. So going by that line, going by the impact in future, I would put B as a better possible answer over D. So all the students who have taken D as an answer, I hope it's clear. You can't mark A and C because that they are like totally wrong answers. Your answer have to be between B and D. And this is the reason I choose uh, B over D. Okay. Uh, so whenever you're stuck with two options, always uh, do that little bit of dissection and you'll be able to get to the right answer. To conclude, IoT has an impact on education, sports, medicines, and daily lives. Everything. Actually, it's a very simple answer. A is the possible thing. Move on to the next passage. 25th A, yes. So I'll repeat the answers once again. So uh, you can do that. 16 is B for Bombay. 17 is A for Apple. 18 B for Bombay. 19 C for Cat. 20 D for Delhi. Uh, 21 A for Apple. 22 D for Delhi. 23 D for Delhi. 24 B for Bombay. 25 A for Apple. Next question.
very good surya prata okay so i hope everybody is done and i'm also done underlining here so this is a paragraph and there's an interesting thing that you need to catch when i said in the earlier part of the lecture you need to observe the writing style and uh, pattern these are few things that i mentioned if you read this first paragraph we passionately pursue matters that in future appear to be contradictory to our real intention or nature and triumph is followed by remorse or regret initially you feel happy and successful but later you feel sad and uh, regret about it now there are numerous examples in uh, history about it so you're trying to look at the records of history and uh, examples word gives us an idea that we are going to discuss some examples here so a point is mentioned and examples are given that's what we have so first example we have is about alfred nobel how is connected with explosives and how is he dealt with rockets and cannons i hope the content is simple that's why i'm not going in detail about each paragraph and then the next paragraph uh, makes him feel how he felt unhappy towards the end of his life where he was guilty for uh, being part of that and he was regretting the de decision of making a dynamite so he put aside some wealth for nobel prize and also promoted peace another example in the similar case is with another smart scientist that's einstein who feared that nazis would uh, develop atomic bomb so he had requested roosevelt to make an atomic bomb nazis failed but these people made a bomb and put it on hiroshima and that really hurt him a lot but however the man is known to be with uh, connected with atomic bomb that's the so he worked again with disarmament policy he is the one the brain behind making something but he is the one again to be the brain behind disarmament policy also so that's the strange way of life and that's what the passage is all about let's get to the question yes the paradox it's certain nothing is certain in life indicates hatred for scientists no that's not scientific mind a persuasive nature analytical mind something looks like plus minus and uh, something looks like a negative later part of it i would go with analytical mind c is a better answer here for me uh, i would prefer c persuasive is like requesting type of it uh, scientific is more like innovative part of it uh, but uh, nothing is certain is like a plus minus kind of thing and analytical is something to do with that once it looks good you analyze it further you it looks bad it's more to do with the rational kind of thing so c is a better possible answer Alfred uh, established Nobel prizes to uh, use his wealth for hard working people ease his guilt and promote for the betterment of mankind only those who are intelligent and remind people of his uh, achievements answer guys 27b is the right answer definitely it's obviously nobel prize prize and uh, for the society uh, accomplish is a word that you have is it work hard completed successfully Uh, made an effort to do something one it's not an effort it's completely achieving it accomplish means the clear cut b is an answer in the fifth paragraph the word endorsement endorsement is more to do with supporting something approval or support c is the best possible answer now whenever you have vocabulary one suggestion that i have is um, endorsement is like a support um, uh, niharika so let's go to the paragraph um, mm. Okay, Einstein was deeply grieved. He was very much sorry, and re he regretted. He felt sorry. Okay, grief is more like the feeling, and regretted, felt sorry. His endorsement of the need for nuclear research, his support for the need for re nuclear research. He supported nuclear research, and that's his problem, right? He was the one who uh, asked Roosevelt to start it on. So that's the reason. Uh, he, he, uh, the word endorsement is more to do with support. you can connect the word with this also uh, like um, uh, amita bachchan endorses dairy milk or um, uh, sanya mirza endorses something else so endorsements is that the advertisements that they support the 29 the answer is c 30 einstein had the impression that germans would he uh, there's a nice word they're fearing that the nazis would win the race to build the first atomic bomb first paragraph first line you had that so he was afraid that they would make the first one so a is the answer 38 is that very good working with the arms and ammunition helped um, uh, alfred to amass great wealth obviously he had wealth that's the thing money is what he had and it's the money that he used it later i would go with 31 enemies ha huh? he didn't have enemies nobody came and killed him guys uh, alfred uh, where is he well, nobody was unhappy besides honoring men uh, let's see 
was money that he made use of it because he set up uh, he had the money to buy the Bofors armament plant in Sweden that says how much uh, wealth he has accumulated and it is this money he put that aside for the Nobel Prize so the entire discussion there is with wealth so C is a better possible answer okay I hope you are okay with that Bhavita now it's not enemies but enemies and uh, intelligence are nowhere in picture if anybody might have marked you might have marked A but uh, the passage here is more specifically talking about uh, Nobel awards and how he regretted later in his life after making it and how that money contributed the Nobel Peace Prize. So that's the reason C is the answer. Next, the passage is uh, here. This was a little controversial that here. Expository is also something to do with meaning, but the answer that was given in the paper was actually C. Um, here up. Even there was a discussion in that year with the key part of it. Uh, the reason is expository has multiple categories, expository essays and descriptive is one type of it. Process essays are also another type of it. That's, so that's why C turned out to be the ultimate answer. Yes, 32 is C. 30th answer turned out to be A. A is answer. Okay, let's answer. 30th question, the answer is A. I, I, Germans were actually unsuccessful. Yes, I agree to that. 30th, Anshika. But the thing is, what was the impression he had? Now, if his impression was that Germans are going to be unsuccessful, then he will not make the bomb. Now, he initially had the uh, uh, fear of uh, that they would make it. Fifth paragraph, first line clearly indicates that he feared it. He feared that they would make it and uh, that's why he started the project. And... Uh, and the later part of it also, all this while Einstein had the impression that bomb would be used to protect the world from Nazis, but we ended up making, uh, destroying Hiroshima. So his entire fear was they would be the first ones to do it and he didn't want to uh, be in a situation where uh, the US doesn't have it. Because he thought the US will use it more uh, smartly or more in a defensive manner and more just to threaten, but it actually had a different impact. Okay. Am I clear with that? So that's why we would prefer with the A over C. If I have to make the question for, for the 30th question, if I have to make C as an answer, my question should be something like this. Um, what was the initial uh, in, impression that German about Germans that Einstein had, but what happened ultimately? If it was like what happened ultimately, then it would they were unsuccessful and uh, making the atomic bomb, that's the ultimate answer. Okay? okay, guys, am I clear? Any questions? Any questions so far with today's lecture? So I hope uh, it was a good one that for you to try the different types of questions. Mostly they were all simple, not very controversial and all that. And um, questions were pretty easy. Direct questions, very few indirect ones, hardly, actually. But you'll have all the types of questions. Don't expect the paper to be always uh, direct and easy. You'll have passages where you have to do intense reading. 2011 was one thing that I would say where there's a lot of intense reading that was required, I guess. Um, and again, uh, the paper in 2017 also, it was like a CAT, seven, CAT paper. RC kind of question was what the students were saying. So yeah, you'll have diverse uh, ranges and diverse difficulty levels. So 2018 or 19 also was something different. Yeah, so that's it. You'll have all the mixed type of it. Uh, Kushi, Khurana, yes. Kushi, the question was more about uh, the types of essays, which was more to do with uh, writing styles and all. Articles are diff written in different format. Uh, sometimes the style of writing could be factual and statistical. Sometimes it could be analytical where you do a compare and contrast. Sometimes you describe something. Uh, there's a point that you try to describe. Sometimes you're explaining a process, step-by-step -step methodology, etc. So here the options part of it, you can happily eliminate the options in terms of expository and uh, argumentative is eliminated happily because there's no plus minus debate going on there. There's no word there that is debate like it. And the other one is process, which is like a step-by-step -step explanation. So B and D are happily gone. And I have to choose my answer between A and C. One of your friends shared uh, another meaning of uh, expository. Um, 
so but when we were having this question students that year were confused between expository and uh, uh, descriptive part of it we have chosen it to be descriptive the reason being is you had a point given in the first line a general point and then they said they use the word called examples and then two examples were given so there was some kind of description about the situation of those scientists and all that so hence we preferred it to go more with c as a possible answer okay styles of writing tones different tone related words will be an integral part of our uh, uh, reading comprehension lecture uh, where you'll uh, go more in detail about the different styles okay i hope that explains kushi uh see canvas is basically uh, the the thing right painting is like the picture that you painted but canvas is the um, what do they call the material that you think uh, make it on right you sketch something it becomes a painting without sketch it's just a piece of paper right and there's another canvas which is election campaigning election canvassing that is a different one is that okay vishnu teja yeah devansh board is the canvas the the paper kind of thing thanks devansh is that okay vishnu okay good thanks nice. anything else guys yes vivek you have some question Shreya, you were about to type something. Do you have any question? Okay. So we'll have more about speed reading and uh, approaches and all that uh, as part of the module. So don't worry. We'll focus a lot on reading skills this year. Definitely. so take care of your health guys keep yourself hydrated stay indoors stay safe um uh, a little more about grammar rules well the one i mean i i cannot do the individual grammar rules here but when i say grammar rules about how different parts of speech is uh, are applied like adjectives degrees of comparison and uh, prepositions and appropriate usage of the preposition so that's about the grammar rules that you have um and then tenses uh the where the appropriate verb form is used subject verb agreement is another concept of grammar that we have where uh, subject and verb the verb should be singular plural accordingly the appropriate one is used these are the standard grammar related concepts that we have apart from that we have other things like uh, parallelism um uh parallelism modifiers and other things that come in Uh, which are more like language patterns related redundancy parallelism uh, modify and other concepts so we'll uh, discuss all those things as part of the different sections sometimes your commonly confusing words also can impact your grammar related things because an in, inappropriate word is put up in a particular place so that's also related to grammar so if you want to improve your grammar meanwhile start reading the rules and all obviously i'm sure you have your ebooks probably uh, shared already that should have the grammar rules or your textbooks have good amount of it intermediate first year textbook of telangana has good one um, check your textbook ip textbook or 11th textbook red and martin is a good grammar book if you have a uh, have that red and martin and it has its own solutions book also uh, so that's another good grammar book that you can think of so first you can read the rules in the okay good day much i hope that explains your thing Hi Ranjit. Anybody? Any other questions, guys? Okay, then you have your mock exam today. Uh, definitely solve the mocks, guys. I don't want anybody to miss the mock exam uh, because only if you take the mock exam, we'll be able to understand where you're standing and how you're doing, right? How is your performance in different sections and all? Mocks help us to evaluate your performance, so I definitely want all of you to take the mock seriously. by the manch 
Uh, the mock is usually available for a 24 hour period. So it's supposed to be launched by nine o'clock this morning, uh, 26 morning, nine o'clock till tomorrow, nine o'clock. Okay. So they had it for a 24 hour period. So I usually recommend you to have fixed time. Like every Sunday plan something like three to five for your mock. We didn't give only two hour variation because uh, you can write at your comfort. Maybe for your seniors, you'll restrict it more. But definitely do it, guys. Because by tomorrow end, they'll pull out the results. Once you do the results, af after the results, you will not be able to, even if you might be able to take the mock, they might release it for you, but your scores are something that we will not be able to consider because they'll release the key also. The key and the solutions will be released. So it's important that you take your mock. If you need your scores to be considered, we want you to take your mocks before the key is released because that's when it is more authentic, right? I'm sure you'll understand. Hi, Sadia. Keep reading. I think you missed one mock, Sadia. Uh, I lit. Um, I don't want you to miss, okay? And after your two hour period of mock window is over, definitely uh, uh, give some more extra time to learn. Uh, uh, just see that. Uh, the paper will be done. Obviously, it will be submitted. But once you get the release of the paper, spend a little time in solving those questions that you couldn't do because you'll know if it was a speed issue, right? Because today, if you saw the questions, you might have understood that speed was definitely one aspect that certain questions might trouble students in the exam. Literally, actually, they're not a problem. But exam is all about time, right? Speed is what makes the difference there. So today, we did the entire 32 questions in one hour. And obviously, in the exam, you'll not have so much time. That's where it is. And you have negative marking also. Hi, Surya Pratap. Uh, you are not sure where to take the mock um, uh, that's David right uh, uh, can you call Sampath David because it's usually available in the e-test pattern uh, it's in your log uh, account and it's under the e-test so you should be able to do it there so just call Sampath he'll help you out there uh, Sadia what we've decided is we'll introduce each uh, each uh, what do you say, section and uh, what is expected in the section and then the classes. So gradually everything will be there. Obviously all the sections will be covered, don't worry. It's just that as per the plan it's going, okay? First, improve your reading, Sadia. That's one suggestion that I have. Because the moment your reading is taken care of, legal is going to be easy and CR is also going to be easy. Yeah, I'm sure you'll understand that. Any other questions, guys? Hi, Ashika. Bye, my hair. Risa, any specific questions? I need you to respond to answers, okay? Today you haven't done. Bye, 
Achan. I'm happy, guys. Sadia and all Chandan, you were taking tests seriously. That's good. I think around uh, 10 students were taking them seriously. 7 to 10 students. That's good. Keep doing that. Shriya, I think you missed your tests, right? Make sure you take it this time. Vijay, I need you to respond. Hope you follow the class. Do read a lot. Yashwan Hema Harika. Harika responded. Okay, good. I hope you're reading. Read eclectic articles, okay? All types. Spend good amount of time every day on reading, guys. Read good ones, okay? Not just the negative news. Find good articles. You'll have good amount of content there. Nice articles, good ones. Bye, Ananya. Any other questions, guys? Do you want me to turn off then? You can shoot any questions if you have related to the web, uh, web uh, website, I mean, the portal, student portal, check there for all the information related to your e-lectures and e-tests. And lawprep.in is a portal where you'll have your news board and crosswords and all that. Take your GK current affairs also seriously. You can regularly read them. Have a good day, guys. And here I sign off from today's lecture. Enjoy your Sunday.